problem is what happens when a big fish eats one of your prize baits. You're excited, adrenaline's going, excitement's going, everybody's screaming around the boat. This is what it's all about. Commercial fisherman, 40 years old, Corey Berlou. Started fishing at the age of 12. A friend of mine took me to the Intercoastal one day and I was hooked ever since. Using a little Zepco reel, a little button push pole. And I, you know, went to school, would fish on the weekends, work on charter boats, wash boats, until I until the love of the sport get even more and more. It's the only thing I found that really challenged me in life. Every day is different. And that's what I do. Just fish for a living, 24-7, 365 days a year. As you can see, one of my prized possessions here is a 755-pound Mako. Spent four and a half hours catching that beast on heavy tackle, 80-pound tests, and that was a great story in itself. We had fought it for four and a half hours, like I said, uh, on an 80. It spooled the 80, and spooled means all the line got off the reel. Had a clip of 130 to the reel, which is a bigger one. Throw the rod overboard, fight it on the other rod for an hour until we got that rod back up, and then we fought it for three hours on the, on the first rod. And once we got it all the way up to the boat there, we realized how big the Mako was. And as we are getting ready to put the gaffs in them, the line broke off the corner of the boat, and it started to swim away, and I tried to harpoon it. It hit the harpoon right in the back of his neck there and stunned him, so he stayed on the surface and kept swimming. And so I chased him down with the boat, and we were able to get in front of him, and, and my buddy was able to get a gaff in him, and we tied him off to this cleat, and that's how we caught him. And we had to drag him in for three hours because it was so big we couldn't get him in the boat. But that's one of the stories I've had. And like I said, as you can see all the trophies, I do compete a lot. It's my passion to be the best in the world, and I, it sucks when you lose. Simple as that. Everybody loses, and everybody wins. But when I lose, this is my pouty face. When I win, damn right I'm the winner around here! It's how I win. But anyhow, just kidding aside, I, I, it's great. I love it. It's my passion. Um, another quick story is my old dog, Darby. We used to go flats fishing. That's another thing that I, I do a lot of too, is I do a lot of light tackle fishing up to heavy tackle fishing. Anywhere from two pound test up to 130 pound test. Hand line, electric reels, everything. Kite fishing, bottom fishing, shark fishing. Just you name it, I've done it. And I love competing in all that kind of stuff. But back to the story with my old dog, Darby. We used to fish on the flats over in the Bahamas for bonefish. And he was very good at fishing with me. He'd walk and you have to be real quiet, stealthy for the bonefish. And you would cast, try to lead the bonefish up and hook the bonefish up. And at the same time, he would sit there and wait. And as soon as I'd hook the bonefish up, he would run out there while I'd fight it and, and corral him in onto the beach. And it was so easy to catch him. Just would swim right up on the beach and wind up the slack, and there he is. And that was one of my favorite pets until he, till he passed away. And now my dog now hangs on the beach, watches me to bring the food for him or whatever I catch, and he, he doesn't have a care in the world to be in the water. So you can go from one extreme to another. As you can see, all the rods I use, I adapt to all kinds of fishing, whether it's bottom fishing, trolling, drifting, casting, jigging, you name it, I can do it. Hopefully, we're pretty good, I think. And uh, you can see I have some of my trophies that I've caught over the years. A lot of them are, are, are special ones. I don't mount a lot. I don't do a lot of pictures because I just, you do it so much. I guess I've been kind of spoiled as far as, I shouldn't say spoiled. I, I should say more humble. So I don't really like to brag about stuff. As my grandfather used to tell me, let others do the bragging for you. So this, anyhow, this is some of my stuff here, and I enjoy it a lot. It provides a lot of lifetime excitement and memories that you'll never forget. I've done a lot of charities, taken out wounded veterans, and the, the thrills and excitement to see on their face when you do this stuff is awesome. And let alone the knowledge I can teach younger people or even older people who don't know much about it.
I'm very patient with people, can teach them as long as they want to learn. Here's some more trophies. Again, very competitive. I do very well. Place. I don't place in all tournaments, but I do very well. I do pretty good. I take pride in what I do. I spend the extra hours, preparation, and time for getting the right tackle, bait, whatever I need to win to do the best I can, where most people just kind of wing it. And as, as, I, as you can see, it does pay off in the long run. And as you can see, I'm a thrill seeker. Not only do I fish for a living, but I used to be a nuisance alligator trapper for three years. And we would go out and catch nuisance alligators in communities ranging from four feet to 12 feet. And here's one of my catches here, it's a seven and a half footer that I got mounted, nice head mount. And the one up here, you can see is a skull mount, is right around 12 feet. But we use rod and reel, believe it or not with a weighted treble hook and that's how we'd catch them. It's almost like sight casting for bonefish. You'd see them and you'd cast them and you'd hook up onto them. you got to be an excellent caster, of course. You fight them just like they fight like sharks and they're very, very aggressive. But one of the stories I can tell you, the first time I've ever done this on my own was I caught two alligators one day and it was like an eight footer and as a matter of fact, this seven and a half footer. And it was one of those hot summer days going down 441 heading down to the pen where we, where we drop them off and one of them jumped out of the back of the truck. And I had to jump out, out of the truck to go grab this alligator and my hands were wet, it was hot and sweaty so I went to grab his head because they're all taped up around here to keep their mouths shut. And I grabbed his head and the tape slipped off and I went to reach back really quick to him and of course he bit me. My whole arm was in like this and my instinct was to kick him and he let go and I still was able to tackle him, bleeding and all. Get them all taped up, subdue them, get them back in the truck, and, and make sure everybody was safe. And by the time I was all said and done, 22 stitches later, um, I was still excited about going and catching these things. Here's where it all started, here behind me. Started at the age of 12, a lot of memories, a lot of good fish, a lot of excitement. And not bad for an office view, especially if it's on the beach. After 28 years, recreational, commercial, whether I'm fishing by myself or with team players, I'm still animated, energetic, and act like I've never caught a fish before in my life. Never know what to expect with me because you just never know.